Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I got two things going on. You know, it's summertime, so I've got both kids in the house. Well, the nine-year-old is back there. He has just discovered. Now, this is an interesting thing in, in personalities of kids. When I was a kid, we played with Legos and the second that we bought a Lego set, within within days, that Lego set was torn apart and thrown into a box with all the other old Lego sets and we would use our imaginations and we would build things. But my nine year old has a different personality. My cousin, when I was growing up, would build his Lego set and he would keep it built and then he would put them underneath his bed and he would have all of the Lego sets that he ever bought or, or were ever bought for him put together under his bed. Well, this is what my nine-year-old does. He's fixated on keeping these things together. And I keep telling him, no, use your imagination. I said, I told him, I said, Einstein said imagination is more important than knowledge. Well, so he's just discovered this concept of using his imagination to build things instead of just building the set when he gets it and then forgetting about it and keeping it put together. Then here's what else I'm dealing with this morning. Then I go... Now think about this for a minute. This is this is, and I try to tell my son this, and he just further rolls his eyes. My son is 16 year, years old now, which means that he knows everything, and I am all of a sudden stupid. After 48 years, I have become stupid overnight. I can barely even talk to the kid without him rolling his eyes. And I just told him, I said, "Listen, I'm about to go do a video. It'll be watched 20 or 30 thousand times, but you don't even want to. You you look like you're just disgusted and eye rolling just at the idea that I would even speak to you." <laughs> it's crazy. These kids, that when they go through that teeny bopper stage or whatever you want to call it, it's like, wow. Now, it doesn't offend me. It gets his mother upset, but it doesn't offend me uh, because I just know that that's the stage of life. He won't really come back and want to hang out with us till he's about 30. <laughs> so, all right, let's get going. Didn't mean to go on that too long. Um, SIPS is a Chinese payment. So this is an interesting thread. SIPS is a Chinese payment platform developed in conjunction with the Russians that mirrors the Western Swiss system. The pieces are being put into place to challenge the dollar. When all these dollars get dumped, if you think inflation is bad now, wait until 90% of the world has to own dollars to buy oil. Uh, wait until the 90% of the world that has to own dollars to buy oil starts to shed those dollars in favor of other currencies because now OPEC is allowing other currencies to buy oil. That is where we are heading. Petrodollar is non-existent and all other dollars floating around the globe come back to the U.S. It will cause a mass, massive hyperinflation, skyrocketing interest rates, stocks, bonds, real estate will all collapse together. When that happens, not only do you see massive inflation, but interest rates will, will also go to the moon. There is your Klaus Schwab great reset moment when the world dumps dollars. Now, this person comes in and says, Bitcoin, no, Bitcoin. no sir, that is not what, what the deal is. You know what the deal, and by the way, here's here are bank runs in China. This was a video I saw this morning. Limits on how much cash they can withdraw. Now, the the solution, that, or not solution, but but what I'm doing to because of all these fears out there, one of the the things I'm doing is I'm buying gold on my Glint um, in my Glint account so that I can have it spendable in my my debit Mastercard is literally spendable gold. But I'm also buying physical gold and silver. Okay, but. Uh, this is one part of what I'm doing. This is one of my favorite sponsors for that reason. I'm putting the link in the top of this description um, because think about it. Even with your physical gold, in a hyperinflationary situation, this, I can actually use a card. <laughs> I can actually use my card to, to so that my spending power is not affected. Now, the Bitcoin maxis, CNBC can, continues to carry the narrative. Watch. I mean, there's people that have, I mean, I, 
not even including Matt Damon, because you know that the future belongs to the brave. You saw all those, uh, there's a lot of stadiums named for crypto, but I haven't seen much from Novogratz, but Michael Saylor said a few things. This was, I, I read this earlier. Yeah, I bet you're not hearing much from them. Wink, one of the Winklevi, Cameron. Okay, Bitcoin under 20 feels like an over-rotation. The underlying fundamentals, adoption, and infrastructure have never been stronger. We feel, or we saw the irrational top, this feels irrational in the other direction. So has there been progress made in all those that he cited there, infrastructure, uh, adoption, uh, regulation, or, or is it all sort of an illusion? Yeah, if you can I, go back to 13,000. Sort of an illusion. That's what I agree with. I think Bitcoin is a total illusion or, or a distraction. I think that all of this is a distraction. I'm about to show you, this is the pl what I call the crypto playground, where I'm about to take you to where the adults in the room are, okay? Um, but first I wanted to show you this, where um, the market is at 926 billion. There's a little bit of green we see. Um, but here's where, <clears throat> now I'm gonna show you what the adults are up to while the Bitcoin and proof of work people and those all those buyers or whatever are in the proof of work playground, here's what's going in here's here's what's going on in big boy and big girl land. Okay, new crypto cannot form the foundation of the global monetary system due to structural flaws, according to BIS. Now, here's the article. I want to draw your attention to this right down here. It says. The chapter, which will be published Tuesday ahead of the full report, identifies a number of limitations of crypto, including the lack of a stable nominal anchor. In monetary policy, that is a variable, such as a currency peg, that can be used to control price levels. So they need a stable nominal anchor. Well, this reminds me of Stellar's websites, uh, where they talk about the anchor basics. Anchors connect Stellar's network to tradi traditional banking rails so that all the world's currencies can interoperate in a single, single seamless platform. By providing access to local on off ramps, they empower the apps and services built on Stellar to provide borderless access to financial infrastructure. Now, I was watching, and you gotta see this, folks. This is Danielle Dixon, CEO of Stellar, right here. This guy right here is Jim Kuna, Senior VP of Secure Payments and FinTech, Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, and head of U.S. Federal Reserve CBDC project with MIT. Now, folks, make no mistake. When you hear CBDC, you need to think Stellar and Ripple because those are two of the only digital assets where they are publicly talking about CBDCs being built on these. And when you hear this guy talk later in the video, you will actually hear him say in his own, he is well aware of what Stellar's doing. They're not talking about Ripple here, but before we get to that, I'll just play this one for you. This is from um, Jeannie back, uh, this is uh, a while back, but this is one of the guys from, from Ripple, and um, he's talking about all the central banks they're working with. took a very contrarian view and actually said no. We will be working with central banks, regulators, and banks to uh, make sure that our solution is widely adopted. And, and which is why I'm, I'm actually employed by Ripple because uh, so we actually work very closely with about 40, 50 central banks across the globe, including Bank of Thailand. So Ripple has taken that approach of collaboration and education. 40 to 50 as, central as banks across the globe. I think globe. apart from education, collaboration is also extremely key, especially in the world where technology uh, keeps out. All right, you don't need to see any more of that. Now I'm going to take you back to Dan L. Dixon. Listen to this, folks. I call this the Ripple and Stellar Show. Uh, so on Stellar, for example, you can create digital representations of a U.S. dollar. On Stellar, you, we have this thing called dollar tokens. USDC is one of the strongest dollar tokens that exist. They're backed by, it's a fiat, it's fiat to fiat, fiat to digital. So every uh, digital dollar is backed by a corresponding fiat dollar. Uh, and you can tell the world uh, that whenever someone deposits a traditional dollar with you, you can issue them their new token. So that's the, in the simplest form, now, she just referenced USDC. Remember, she's partnered with Circle, and USDC was built on Ethereum, but it runs through Stellar because Ethereum is terrible. Assets allow users to be able to transact and send them very simply in three to five seconds on the blockchain, and to be able to convert them very easily into the currency that they choose to convert, because there are also digital currencies on the other side. Uh, so that's, the, that's simply how it works on Stellar, at least. 
And I think that when we have these public to private partnerships, particularly if you think about the work with respect to CBDCs, it enhances that value much in the same way that correspondent banking does today, is that you have the Fed who issues the money goes out to the correspondent banks and then they leverage that. The same can be told with CBDCs and other tokens that are issued um, that are backed by fiat or backed by assets like gold, for example. We call them anchors, which are these financial institutions that we call on and off ramps to the seller network. Um, and those are the ones that can, like you can you can redeem your digital currency for your local currency. Um, there's a de decentralized exchange on the seller network that actually allows you to convert from, for example, a USD uh, to uh, to another to a Mexican peso, and then you can you can redeem that on whichever side you choose to redeem it on. Um, so it's a pretty remarkable system, and the the challenge for all of this is actually creating that that ecosystem around it, and just making sure that you have all of the pieces that these end users want. And so that's what our focus is at, at the SDF, as we focus on building that ecosystem. Yeah, and I think there's another component that we hear from central banks all the time. It's the compliance feature. All the time she hears from central banks. It's how they can control their uh, their digital asset. Um, some of them might not want it to be global, as we, we would love them all to be open and global and, and available. But so Stellar actually has a built-in feature that allows authorization required so that you actually can only allow it to go, you know, you can determine when you want to actually require uh, get the KYC, the know your customer data, um, and when you want to allow it to be utilized. These are important things that you need, even if I don't necessarily think it's the right thing. These are important things that you need to have for governments as they think through how they want to issue their digital assets. And I'll just say too, that I think CBDC is an area for great potential innovation that we haven't even thought about. You know, when you talk about what's happening with, with stable coins and with some of the cryptos and what Stella does in this network, I think there's so much opportunity for innovation outside of the realm of existing rails that I think that it'll be, they'll be supportive of each other. Every new thing competes with everything else, but that's, that's just reality. But I see us solving many different use cases. So the Federal Reserve is gonna be solving many use cases and he's well aware of Stellar and he's well aware of Ripple. You can write that down, take it to the bank. Now, this is an older clip that was going around that's important in the context of what I was just showing you because at the end of this, Christine Lagarde specifically mentions Ripple and Circle. Listen to this. Not seeing it coming and they're not embracing it. And those who self-induce that cannibalization, and I'm using cannibalization on purpose because it's a bit of a striking, horrible word, but it's really what it means. It's you're going to disrupt your business model, you're going to change it, you're going to reduce your cost, you're going to expedite your transactions, and you're going to continue to inspire confidence because you will build that on the basis of an existing backbone, which is your bank and the confidence relationship that you've established with your customers. So that's where I see changes happening now. If you think of Circle and Ripples and all those, that, that's where they are acting. And all those, let's just go so, let's throw in Stellar. And then the guy from the Federal Reserve just point blank tells you that the governments of the world are not doing anything with proof of work. I say at a global level, you know, there is competition among crypto and at point, and some people will choose one over another for various purposes. And if green or consumption is your issue, then you'll make a choice based on that. I know that governments would not build anything that is proof of work, as I said before, and nothing that would be um, consuming more energy than a normal payment. So not proof of work. I've tried to tell you this for four years. Now, breaking pro shares to list USA's first short Bitcoin ETF. So Gary Gensler is going to allow a short Bitcoin ETF, but not a long Bitcoin ETF. You can't make this stuff up. And this guy says the big boys really want uh, some cheap spot corn. Get your Bitcoin off the exchanges and get your cash ready. Gary Gensler, you're an absolute parasite sellout that cares more about the Goldman Sachs types before the American citizens. Senator Gillibrand and Loomis investigate. <laughs> They're not investigating anything, folks. Now, uh, David, here's a little cl clip that was going around from David Schwartz. Apparently, go give uh, the XRP, XRP Darren a follow. XRP Darren uh, apparently put this out or found this. So uh, give, give him a follow. This guy's old school and he's real smart. 
The XRP Ledger has a built-in decentralized exchange, including all kinds of features like peer-to-peer -peer credit, sophisticated multi-hop payment features, and so on. And that leaves the XRP Ledger uniquely positioned to leapfrog other DEXs by offering a unique automated market maker implementation. The, probably the most unique feature is it allows those who provide liquidity for automated market makers to take a large share of the profits that would normally go to arbitrages. Can't really talk about the secret sauce just yet. Uh, we're not going to be able to get there alone. Um, Ripple, can't, Ripple can't do this by itself. Uh, we're working with the broader XRP Ledger community to expand the DeFi ecosystem with this automated market maker implementation. Um, Looking towards the future and looking at the current crypto landscape, crypto liquidity today is very fragmented. It's very similar to foreign exchange this way. Uh, we have an ecosystem with wallets, exchanges, blockchains, poor user experience, and poor interoperability. Uh, it's like the internet in those very, very early days. Uh, we need to get to the point where users can use these technologies without having to have these deep understandings of them. And given the decentralized nature of the underlying technology, that fragmentation is only going to increase. We're in a field with rapid innovation, constant introduction of new techniques and new systems. If they don't interoperate with existing systems, user experiences will be tech. All right, a um, lot going on. A number of crypto exchanges have been impacted by an outage uh, with Cl Cloudflare. I would say get your stuff off exchanges and go get a Ledger Nano S. That's what I did. Uh, but uh, Coinbase was one of them. They're uh, experiencing connectivity issues. And then this. I don't think, folks, I think there's more There's more to come because I think that someone out there is intentionally trying to pound these stable coins into the ground. Um, I think that, I, I personally believe that there are people that are being put up to doing what's necessary to to scare people away from these stable coins so that the governments can hold up their hand and say, see, we need regulations, and now you need Wall Street to come in and save you because they have been trusted for a hundred years, and now they're here to save you. I think that that's what Gary Gensler is for, is to help the, the Wall Street people come in and save the day. I think that's the whole point, whole reason he was sent there. So now it's Bancor. Um, there's a Bancor announcement, um, uh, and this, this guy thinks that there's something going on with Bancor now. So I'll let you look into that. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment. By the way, I, I tweeted last night, I don't care if there's more shoes to drop. And if, if whether it's Tether or this or something else and the market goes down more, I'm not trying to figure out where the bottom is. What I'm doing is I am buying the 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 things that I know are going to be more, like the bigger picture infrastructure type plays, things that I think are gonna be a part of the financial system for the next 100 years. Things like Cardano and things like Quant. And th you know, I'm just mentioning some of the, I, call, I did a tweet yesterday, it was called the Power Eight. Um, and these are the ones that, that I believe in one way or another are tied to governments. And so that's what I'm focused on. I, if the, let's say the market could cut in half from here, and I will, st whether it's a half or a third or it goes up, I'm going to be accumulating the ones that I think are a bigger picture things. And that's what I'll be doing. I'm not telling you what to do because I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that there's. It looks like there could be more shoes to drop. And if I'm if I'm I'm placing my money on a tether, personally, uh, 